Boxing Elm is a, is a true Evil Swimming channel. Awesome. Yes. You didn't hear this story? So, originally I was doing videos for YouTube for two and a half years. Okay. And I was not making money on them or anything like that. And then I lost my office job. And back then, it wasn't possible for you to just monetize your gameplay videos. YouTube would not allow you to. If you had, like, a personal AdSense account, they wouldn't let you monetize gameplay videos. It was against the rules. So, when I lost my job, I was like, well, man, I want to try to make YouTube work somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do that because you can't monetize gameplay videos. Um, I was looking for alternate alternatives, like, what's an alternate alternative to YouTube? And one of them was this place called Blip TV that was doing video hosting like YouTube. Now, Blip TV was nothing like YouTube. For those of you who ever used it back in the day, it loaded slowly. It barely had any ad companies working for it. There was the, the, for the, the two months I was there... 95% of the time when you watch one of my videos on Blip TV, it played a, a, a fucking ad for Zappos or something, which was like a clothing company. And it was really b stupid. The same ad on every video, everyone just made fun of it co constantly. <clears throat> um, but anyway, so I went to Blip TV, and when I went over there, I was basically kind of like a big fish in a small pound, per se, because on Blip TV there were really only like two people who were getting any views. One of them was the Nostalgia Critic, and the other one was Angry Joe. <clears throat> and that's the truth of the matter. Those were the only guys that were getting any significant views. Everyone else was, like, insanely small potatoes over there. <clears throat> so, I w wanted to be with Channel Awesome because I was a big fan of the Nostalgia Critic, and I knew that he did his videos exclusively over on Blue TV until he uploaded them to his own website later for people who subscribe to his site. So I was like, man, maybe this will work out. Maybe I'll have somewhere to put my gameplay. So I was already uploading all my videos to Blip TV. Okay, I'd already made the move, but I talked with those guys about being part of their brand, basically. And they're like, yeah, what'll happen is your videos will show up under our branding, <clears throat> and on our, our homepage, you'll be listed as one of the, the featured talents. And every once in a while, we'll ask you to do collaboration projects and the like. It'll be really cool and awesome and positive and everything. So... Basically, I was talking about Channel Awesome, and along this time frame, I'm getting insane o views. Like the most, I think I was, like I said, I think I'm pretty sure I was the second highest guy viewed on the on the, the site. It was the Salsa Critic, and then it was me, and then it was everybody else. Um, and I had only uploaded there for about a month, but that's when I did the controversial because I was an idiot back then. The controversial Dead Space 2 demo video, where I basically made very insensitive humor about the Holocaust, which now I look back on, I got it, finally. Now I look back on that and I say, man, that was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that. It was dumb. Not that I had meant anything by it. It was a parody of something they had done on the Howard Stern show before. Uh, it even had some of the same jokes and same lines. But, I'm not Howard Stern. And I certainly don't have the reach or the tact that he does. And I was doing these stupid Holocaust jokes. People got really offended. And, okay, here's the truth of the matter. No one got really offended. But the trolls, because, yes, even back then I had trolls who hated me and wanted to get me off the Internet, even as back as early as 2010, okay? It certainly wasn't to the extent that it is now, but I always had trolls. So these people decided we're going to write Twitch TV, excuse me, we're going to write Blip TV with a write-in campaign to say we're incredibly offended by what Phil said in that video to the point where we want him off your site. How could you condone this kind of behavior on your site? All right. So I was actually, the truth of the matter is, this is a really crazy story. <clears throat> During one week at Blip TV, I talked to Channel Awesome. They agreed that they were going to partner me. I was contacted personally by Blip TV senior staff and told, listen, you just arrived at our site and you're already number two on the site. You're a big shot. We, what we want you to do, we want to have exclusive talks with you about how your content's going to come out, how to feature your content on our site. We could definitely see this partnership working out really big time in the future. We're excited about you being here, so let's talk, okay? Then the video came out, the Dead Space 2 video, and then later that week, I was supposed to have this meeting with Blip TV management about, uh, you know, the future and everything. And I was really excited. And I'm waiting, and they're never, they never email me about a time or day. So finally, I emailed them back. I'm like, hey, guys, you know, I'm ready to talk whenever you are. I don't know what happened. You're not really, it's like you forgot about it or something. And then all of a sudden, I get another message from Blit, and they go, oh, well, uh, we're sorry that that meeting is no longer going to happen. In, in fact, after having meetings with, you know, our internal management or whatever, we've decided that you're not a good fit for the site, and therefore you're, you're going to be banned from the site. 
as of like Monday, and you have like six days to remove your content. I'm like, what? All right, wait a minute. You didn't give me any kind of a, a strike against the channel. You didn't tell me I did anything wrong. You were actually telling me I was doing everything right because you had contacted me earlier this week to tell me that I was so popular on your site that you were going to basically give me like special rewards. Now, within a week's time, you've completely changed your attitude and you say you hate me and you want me off your site, right? And I was like, what the hell is going on? You would change your attitude and you're not even talking. You know, I was like, do you want to talk about it? I'd love to talk about what what's pissed you off so much or whatever so we can actually, you know, discuss a different thing here. Um, a different way to go about this because I think this is kind of messed up. What's going on? I don't really understand it. And I'd obviously, anything that you feel that I should change or I could fix, I'd love to fix. So they basically they came back to me and said, oh, no, we don't want to talk. There's nothing to change. This discussion is already final. There, you know, we're not giving you any kind of a chance here to improve or do anything better. We just want you off the site. All right, what the fuck? Like, it's so fucked up. You know? Like, that's really messed up. Um, how could how could a business that's supposed to be, like, a legit business, right? Within a period of, like, two days, completely change their attitude about me and the content that I put out. But what it basically tells me is this. They basically were very dumb, and they didn't really know what it was like to have anyone popular on their site at all. They didn't know about serious trolling, or the repercussions of it, or how it could affect their site. And, essentially, they had no idea what kind of a content creator I was, or who I was. All they were happy was, oh, here's a guy who just brought in a bunch of views to our business, and immediately start offering me the world, without even knowing who I am, or never even looking at the content. Like, they must have never even looked at the content. Because if they had, they would have known that I had done that those jokes in that one video. I probably would have said, okay, this isn't allowed, you know, this isn't the kind of stuff we want or whatever. Um, instead, they offered me all these things and then reneged on all of them and kicked me off the site, okay? So, basically, after that happened, I was like, damn, this sucks. Like, it's like an emergency now. What am I going to do? Because I can't make money on YouTube or nothing. And I can't make money on this site because they're basically kicking me off because of basically some dumb jokes I made that were very insensitive. Um... So, the thing is, I had been talking with the Channel Awesome guys, and they completely cut off contact with me, 100%, stopped talking to me, didn't email me back, didn't ever talk to me ever again about a follow-up or nothing, because I guess they found out that I had been banned from the site for that joke or whatever, and they basically didn't, uh, you know, didn't want that to be associated with them, you know what I mean? Like, they knew that they couldn't do what they wanted to do on YouTube. For those who don't know, Nostalgia Critic had already been on YouTube and banned from YouTube because he had put out all these edited videos, which is basically him doing like a, a review of a movie or a, a cartoon or some kind of a work. And YouTube is so stupid, it doesn't protect fair use. So he was putting these videos out and YouTube was striking him and taking his videos down. So he said, screw YouTube, I'm gonna go to Blip where fair use is protected. Um, he knew that if he got in trouble, that he basically had nowhere else to go. There was no other competitor for YouTube. So they just basically, they cut all ties with me together, didn't even follow up with me ever again after that happened. But truth of the matter is, if I hadn't been stupid, and I hadn't made that really dumb Holocaust jokes that I did at that very time, I would have been on Blip TV that whole time. I probably would have been part of Channel Awesome. You probably would have seen me in all those crossover events and things they used to do. And who knows what would have happened, because you guys know the story about Channel Awesome, how the, all this, the, the stuff was going on behind the scenes, really controversial, messed up stuff, apparently. Just really screwed up, messed up stuff. So, in reality, maybe I dodged a big, big, big bullet. Who knows? But, you know, you never know. No, Yomi, you're absolutely right. You know, and here, here's the difference between Phil 2020 and Phil 2010. Like, literally, here's the, Oh my god, I'm spinning fireballs. Holy shit. So anyway, here's the difference between me 10 years ago and now. 10 years ago, anything I did, I thought I was hot shit. I thought that I was above reproach. I thought that I couldn't do anything wrong. And I was so angry at Blip.TV. I was so angry that they would punish me for a stupid joke like that. And that they would say, oh, you know, you're off our site without giving me a chance. Now, in reality, I do agree they should have given me a chance, right? So I do think the way they went about it was wrong. I agree that content was not appropriate. And to this day and age, I would never put out content like that. You know, but back then, like I said, I thought it was the Wild West of the internet. You could do and say whatever you wanted. And I felt that I was immune to any kind of criticism 
I was immune to any kind of people telling me that that's too risque or whatever. And I basically thought, oh, people just don't have a sense of humor, you know? Today I look at it, I'm like, nah, dude, you can't joke about the fucking Holocaust. You can't. It's not funny. It's just not funny at all. But it is what it is. But again, that's the difference between 10 years ago and today. Today I look at that, I'm like, man, that's so cringe. That's so bad. Why the hell did I do those stupid jokes? I, you know, that was, I know that's stupid. I shouldn't have done it. But I know that now. That's 10 years later, 10 years wiser. Back then, it was like, everything goes. Anything you say is fine. Just do it. Do whatever you want. Put out any kind of content. It'll be popular. Have I ever formally apologized for those jokes? Yes, of course. I, I, feel, I feel awful that I made those jokes. I know now how stupid those were, how immature they were. I'm really sorry that I did them. I know that those offend people. I don't think the Holocaust is something that should be joked about. You know? I don't, but then again, it's because I'm more mature now. Again, it was so, my life was so fucking weird back then. It was just like, <clears throat> out of nowhere, I went from a dead end office job where I was underappreciated to a place where literally at some points I was like kind of almost worshipped as like, oh my God, this guy's an amazing video gamer and content creator and we like his content. But I can't even move. And you know, he could do no wrong and we really like him. And it was like the complete opposite of what I had my entire life up to that point. Junior Mitch, it was different time back then. It seems that people have nonsense, no sense of humor anymore. No, <clears throat> I don't think that. I think that now people just have become a lot more sensitive to things. And they want, oh my God. They do, they, you know, they want things to be different. They want things to be nicer. I understand that. I'm not 100% for it. And certainly I'm not someone who, I'm someone who I believe it's like generalized humor is fine. A lot of people don't even believe that anymore. Spawn killed to me dollars. Do you still watch Angry Joe? I've never watched Angry Joe. I never wa I keep telling you guys, I never watched any other content creators. Um, I when I before I came on YouTube, I watched Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgia Critic, and that was it. I didn't watch anyone else from like Channel Awesome or whatever. It was just those two guys, the only guys that I watched. Protusum Zone says, do you think it's ironic that there's so many content creators, say on Twitch and YouTube, who have thousands and thousands of views on everything they do? But they're very forgettable, but everyone knows who DSP is. Um, I mean, in reality, I have probably more views than those people, but it's just because I've been around longer than them. Obviously, now I don't get anywhere near as many views as those people probably get. Um, and, you know, at one point I was famous, now I'm basically infamous, and it sucks because a lot of people know me for all the wrong reasons. They know me because of the incident, you know? They know me because... They think I'm the cringeworthy guy who's a lol cow on the internet. When in reality, if you just watch my stuff, you realize that's really not what I'm about, and that's really not the kind of stuff I put out. But that's just what idiots believe because they're they're very ignorant. Um, they don't bother looking for the truth of the matter. They just want to believe the jokes, believe the memes. You know what I mean? But no, I think the reasons that I'm known, a lot of people know me because I've been around for so long, and they see me in a positive light. Sadly, a lot of people know me for all the wrong reasons. So, am I known on the internet? Yes, but I'm known for pretty bad reasons in a lot of cases. So, it's not necessarily a great thing that so many people know me. At the same time, I've had crazy longevity in more than a lot of people who had way more popularity than I ever had. You know what I mean? So, is that a testament to something, I guess? <laughs> what is it? I don't know, but I guess it's a testament to something. <clears throat> who got banned again? 